Come on, right? I mean, it, Jesse was in his truck 15 minutes before service began, still on the phone. You know, wait a minute, he clocked out at 5. But listen, we carry burdens because of responsibilities. Right? You know, uh, some of y'all are married. You, you, you carry a responsibility of, 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 of a household. Right? Bills, you got bills. You got things you got to pay. And, you know, the, things you want, things you desire. And, you know, we carry a lot. Um, however, come on, come on now. God is faithful. Amen. He would never release something to you if you're not able to carry it. Jesus was in the garden and he said, Ooh, nevertheless, come on somebody, not my will, right? His will be done. And so tonight's not about our will, right? Our desires. It's about plugging up to Jesus Christ can have an amen. amen and lifting up his name. Come on. Amen. We may be separate churches in this one place, but I'm going to ask you right now, and I'm going to be very friendly. Lay down the name of your church, right? Come on. Yeah. Lay it down. Come on. Lay it down and pick up the name that matters right now. Pick up the name that brings us all together right now. Come on, his name is helping. Come on. That's right. That's right. That's right. His name is Jesus. And so here at church, you know, we clap. Thank you, Pastor. Come on. We clap. We clap. We stomp our feet a little bit. Come on now. We get down. We lift up our hands. Come on. We look up. James says, all good, all perfect gifts. Come from above, right? If you look up, we, we look to Him. Praise God. Some of y'all going to kneel. Some of y'all going to, you know, maybe you you, 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 you you might cry. And it's all right. Can I have an amen? Yeah. You, you might, you, might uh, you know, feel something. You're like, man, I never felt that before. Well, it's the Holy Spirit going to be moving and operating through you. And I don't want you to get lost in, you know, goosebumps. Because those come and go. But when the move of God works... And works because there's two and three gathered right, right. in His name. Come on, somebody. Right, yeah, yeah. Then that's when you know things are about to change. Yeah, that's good. They're about to change. Thank you, Jesus. And so we're gonna praise. Amen. We're gonna yeah. praise. So I got a question. Why? Why? Why do we praise? Anybody? Why do we praise? Worthy. Amen. He's worthy. Come on. Good. Faithful. Me. Faithful. Come on. Come on, anybody else? Come on, help me. Why do we give God praise? Glorify, glorify Him, love Him. You want to get closer to Him, right? 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 Come on. He deserves it. Because I serve Him. Because you serve Him. Right? Well, what else? Come on, that's good. He's seeking. He's seeking. He's seeking. That's right. He's seeking the worshipers. Come on. Why, why, why do you keep praising Him? Why do you, why do you praise Him? He's merciful. He's merciful. He's merciful. Yeah, yes. Full of forgiveness. Full of forgiveness. I thank God that He's not the God of just the first chance. Come on. Come on, man. He's the God of the second chance. He's the God that says, brush your knees off. Get up. Come on. And don't look back. Move forward. Hallelujah. We praise Him for what He's done. Yes. That's why we praise Him. Some of you have come and you've had addictions. You've had things that have latched on to you, but you surrendered to God. Amen. And God broke that. Woo! Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. You've been free. The Bible says, whom the Son, right? Come on. Not the S-U-N, the S-O-N. Come on. Whom the Son sets free. It's free indeed. So you don't come in here bound. Come on. Slave. No, we come here free. We come here worshiping and praising God for what He has done. And that's a testimony. right? Because there might be somebody right now here struggling in their own personal life right now. And you may have went through that struggle. And you're praising God because you know God is faithful, right. full of forgiveness. He's the Redeemer. Yep. He's the one that sets you free. And if He did it for my brother, come oh, on, somebody. Yeah. And in the Bible that says it's truth, He's no respecter of, come on, people. He'll do 
it for me too. Yep, yep. And in any area of your life, but you're required to believe. Yep, yep. Yeah. Because we do serve an unconditional God who loves us. Right. But when it comes to his promises, they're conditional. Right, brother. You're right, man. Come on. Come on. They have conditions. Yep, yep. The Bible says when you draw near. Yes. Even, help me, come on. Even, it's conditional. Yeah. You gotta do what? Your come on. So this altar may not be big, but the good news is all of this is an altar. Come on. So when you step in, maybe tonight you never lifted your hand. The other day I was talking to the young people, I said, you know, praise God. I said, we'll pray over you. Lift your hands. <laughs> praise God, lift them higher. You know, no, have the freedom. Come on. Come on. Just to be free and, 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 and live. I mean, let's not talk about your favorite team when they're on television. You can go crazy in your own couch. Come on. And lift your hands and all that. How much more should we praise Him? Now, when we step into worship, why do you worship Him? He first loves you. Why do you worship Him? Is it the same praise and worship? Oh, it's totally separate. You praise Him for what He's done. You worship Him for who He is. Now, to some of you, He's your Savior because you're all born again. Yeah, if you're not tonight, you're not. That's yeah. right. Come on. To some of you, He's your Redeemer. Come on. Because yeah. He redeems you. And some of you need Him as Redeemer. Redeemer of life. Redeemer of marriage. Redeemer of finances. Redeemer of health. Come on. Yep. You gotta fight through the battle. You gotta fight through it. Some of you, you need him as Christ the healer. Heal your emotions. Heal your heal 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 your, your body. Maybe you're walking or going through something that nobody knows, only you. God knows. Right. Amen. And God sees faith conditional. He sees you closer to him. And then he operates. Well, the scripture says, give it, it shall be. Yeah, right. Good measure. Rest down. Come on, somebody. Shake your neighbor. Go ahead. Shake it up a little bit. Come on. Now, don't shake the beans out of the bread. Or the corn. Or the corn. But shake it together and then help me. Come on. Come on. Help me. What's the last word? Running over. Running over. Running over. I was talking to Pastor Ephraim how... You know, we as the body of Christ are experiencing right now just an overflow. Yes. Just an overflow of His goodness. An overflow of His love. An overflow of His blessing. And an and overflow of, of people just coming and wanting to receive it. And, and being delivered and set free. Because we know we're in the last days, right? Yeah, man. We've been in the last days since, come on, Peter preached it. Right. Since Paul preached it. Come right. on. Right. And so, uh, in these last times... We are to give him all praise and all worship. May we stand together, Thank you, Lord. Father, we come to you thanking you for this time as worshipers, as men of praise, praising you even in the battle, praising you just as you sent Jehoshaphat before the war, and you sent the praisers in front, just as you had Joshua march around the wall of Jericho. And for seven days they were silent, but then when something had to break and come and make a breakthrough, there was a shout, there was a praise, there was a sound, a trumpet. And just like the day you will come, and every eye will see, and every ear will hear, and every knee and every mouth will confess and bow. That sound is an aroma that we do tonight. God, you receive it. So as we praise you for who you are and what you've done, and oh, you're so good, let our praise be worthy tonight, God. As we clap, as we dance, as we love on you, God, you move in this place, afresh and anew. Holy Spirit, you are welcome to have your way in this house. You lead, you lead this house. Thank you, Lord God, for men of prayer men of purpose, men that understand that they have the power inside them by the Holy Spirit. Oh God, you brought men here tonight to receive and to release 
my faith. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody, say amen. Come on. Come on, the Lord, bring that thing. Come on, say amen again. I'm gonna sing. 
I don't know who it is. I don't know what it is you're believing for. But the word I have for you, faith the size of a mustard seed. Faith the size of a mustard seed. Somehow the devil thought he had you. Somehow the devil thought he gripped you. But today you are set free in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I'm going to say this right now. If that's you, just right where you are, if you need that special touch from the Holy Spirit right now, I want you just to lift your hands and I'm going to ask my dad, I'm going to ask Pastor Danny, Pastor Jackie, Pastor Ephraim, just to see the hands that are up right now. And see the mighty work of God just move. Everyone else should be focused on the Lord right now. In the name of Jesus. 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 We rebuke every foul spirit. We rebuke every demonic force. You go back to the abyss where you belong. You have no place, no part in this house, in these men. We are occupied by the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. A move of the Holy Ghost. Men being filled up to overflow. Come on, let these words that are being prophesied over you right now be confirmation. Be confirmation right now. I call you whole. I call you healed. I call you blessed of the Lord. I call you redeemed, set free, saved. I call your 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 your, your appointments that are up next oh, are, are, are to give God glory right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for a fresh fire. A fresh fire. Psalm 92 talks about a fresh oil. A fresh oil. A fresh oil. Come on, we're going to sing one more song as we're preparing for the word of the Lord. But I want you just to continue to surrender and give right now. Well, some of you is just so heavy, you got to sit down. Some of you are so heavy, you might have to lay down. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Some of y'all are overflowing, you got to give it away. Just be led of the Holy Ghost. Pray for somebody. It's called the body of Christ ministering to the body. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for moving afresh and anew. A fresh oil in this place. We surrender to you, Jesus. Mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loosed. God, we believe. Yes, we can see. Wonder the still what you do.
what you do. those lights real quick dad right there and I want you to come dad and I want you to pray and, and just thank all those involved and just who helped set everything up and just thank the man for being here and love on them and pray prophesy and then invite Pastor Ephraim to come up hallelujah this is Pastor Luis give him a great hand clap go ahead well, let all the glory be to our Lord Jesus Christ 
It's great to be together Amen. in the house of God, the house of prayer, to worship and glorify His name. Yes. Because we know who we serve, yes. a powerful God. Yes. People say there are many gods, and they have many gods. But there is only one true God. Yes. Right. In the name Amen. of Jesus Christ, our Lord, yes. through the Holy Spirit, I welcome each one of you yes. to living faith. Amen. And when you go back to your homes, you will bring back the blessings upon this yes. night yes. to your family, you, to Lord. your congregation, yes. you, to Lord. everyone that yes. surrounds you. Blessings yes. will pour out. Yes. Come on. So the Word of yes. God says, I will pour out yes. blessings upon your life. Yes. I will give yes. you health and wealth together. Come on. Yes. Health and wealth. Yes. And that's a promise from God. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. Yeah. Lord God, I ask you, Lord Jesus. Bendice a mis hermanos en esta noche. Guárdalo, Señor. Yes. Recibelo, Señor, en el Espíritu Santo, Padre. Oh, Señor, Tú eres bueno. Y gracias porque nos hemos congregado en Tu nombre, Dios. Y todos aquellos que están oyendo. Por mí, You know who I'm talking to. Accept Jesus. If you haven't accepted Him as your Lord and Savior, accept Him today. Yes. Because tomorrow is not promised right. to no man. Right, right. To nobody, only God Himself can give you that promise. Just say yes to Jesus. Yes, Father, Jesus. thank you for yes, all the blessings. Jesus. Bless Pastor Ephraim, his family, yes, Lord God, Jesus. as they travel back to the valley. And bless his household, Lord God. Everyone that represents the body of Christ, Lord Jesus, I ask blessings upon their lives. All of this we ask in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. Brother Ephraim, come forth. Amen forward. and amen. Amen, man. Blessings. Amen, man. Glory to God. Glory. Amen, man. Amen, man. Man. I like it. Do me a favor right now. As we're going in the spirit. Please stand up. One more moment. One more moment. One more moment. Come on. Do this. Do this for the Lord, not for me. Right, right. I'm just being obedient to Christ. Everybody, raise your hands. Raise your hands. Everybody, raise your hands. What it is is. We are surrendering to Christ. Right? That's right. Yes. We are here together. Yes. We already made it a point to come and receive. Amen. Men, let's give it all to God. Let's praise God. Let's receive his word with an open heart. Yes. You know, there's a song. There's a song, man. Stay with your arms up right now. Glory. You guys are strong. Yes. You guys are young. Yes. Spiritually, you guys are young. Yes. You're strong. Yes. And you can do it. You can keep your hands up yes. for a little moment more. Yes. Come on, somebody. There's a song. It's a praise song. It says, I'm going to praise God with my heart. I'm going to praise God with my voice. Yes. I'm going to praise God with my hands. Yes. I'm going to praise God with my hands. On, and I'm going to praise God with my soul. But only my soul can praise you no more. That's because I'm in your presence, Lord. Yes. Amen. Right, right, right. My brothers, we are breathing. Yes. We are here tonight. Yes. We are very well alive in Jesus. Yes. Our bodies might be awake, but what about our souls? I pray that in the name of Jesus, that every man that has his hands up, so that your soul and your spirit will wake up yeah. spiritually in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That today, God is going to speak to you like never before. You're going to receive from God. You're going to receive a word that you've been waiting for. And I pray that you receive it with open arms. But I pray that when you receive this this word from God. Be obedient to it in the name of Jesus. Yes, Amen. 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 Let's take a seat. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We have surrendered to the Lord this evening. We are in the presence of Jehovah God. We are in the presence of the Almighty. We don't take this time lightly. I don't take the dry lightly coming out here. Praying and asking God to touch your hearts since a month ahead. I already know that next month we're going to be at Pastor Danny Church. I'm already praying yes. for all the men that are going to be there. That you have a good month. Yes. That you receive from God. That the Lord touches your heart and gives you the strength. I did not sleep last night for whatever reason. I'm really good at sleeping. When I put my head on that pillow, two minutes in, I'm done. I'm asleep. For whatever reason, I did not sleep last night. And I thank God for it because I feel weak. I feel weak physically.
But the Lord says, when you are weak, I give you strength. And I am relying and depending and walking and speaking in the strength of the Lord Almighty. Not on my strength. Not on my muscles. Not on my will. But on God's will. In His favor, I stand before you right now. I didn't come here for no reason. I don't make these trips for no reason. I'm here because I see what the Lord is doing. He's moving and He's healing, transforming. There was this couple. The girlfriend was blind. And the, and the boyfriend, he didn't care. He said, I want to marry you. Marry me. And the lady said, I can't marry you until I see the world. I want to be able to see you. I want to be able to see around me. I can't marry you. I don't know what I'm getting myself into. There's an open door. She goes into surgery. Somebody donated eyes for her. She get her eyes. And the man, the boyfriend standing right there. Now that you see the world. Will you marry me? She sees the boyfriend for the first time. And he, she sees that he's blind. The boyfriend's blind. What? Nah, I can't marry you. You're blind. Get away from me. I'm not going to deal with you. He leaves. But he says word. Please take care of my eyes. For I will love you. But that right there, brothers, is the story of the world and Christianity. Us as Christian men, we will preach to the world. We will talk to them. We will give it all we got to talk to them about Jesus so they can come and see life and have everlasting life. Because we're not in bondage anymore. We're not prisoners. We are free. We see what they don't see. And yet they reject you. And you bring them to the feet of Christ and they see. He almost persuaded me, they'll tell you. Like King Agrippa told Paul. He almost persuaded me. I'm not ready. Maybe next Sunday I'll go to church. Maybe next week I'll go to Bible study. But that's where we must remain faithful to God. Because we don't do it for us. We do it for God so that everybody will have a chance to come to the feet of Christ. But that's the world that we live in. We got to deal with it. We cannot just say that I have with this world and walk away from it. We're in it. We are the ones that God sent forth right. to preach his word right. with his Jesus. To speak Jesus in the streets, in the mountains, in the cities, in the valleys. That is our God-given duty. Amen. We're not supposed to back down from no giant. We're not going to back down from no fight. We're not going to back down from a rejection. Right. You can't back down. We've got to have that love of Christ. Thank you, Lord. People will reject you. But remember what God said. They're not rejecting you, son. They're rejecting my word. But you cannot give up. you got to keep going. That's why we cannot walk in our own strength. We cannot walk in our own will. It has to be in the strength of God. Because we, as men, we are quick to say the heck with you, bro. I tried it. I spoke to you. You didn't receive it. I did watch you, God. That's what we do as men. But when we belong to Jesus, it's a different life. It's a different story. The evidence of God has to be present. Right. People have to see that you are a different man. That you're not like those of the world. Right. We're only passing by. This world is such a short life. Right. 70 years. 80 we have good health. None of us here look kind of fit. <laughs> Everybody's overweight except Patrick Jack. <laughs> it's a short life. And we need to set our focus on the spiritual things, not on the worldly things anymore. Come on. We as Christians should never take a step backwards. Never take a step backwards as Christians. 
we always have to keep moving forward no matter what you encounter. Because the battle belongs to God, you, not to us. Thank you, Lord. When we see the battle come, we hit the floor with our knees. And that's when we're going to have the victory. But you cannot go out there fighting on your own strength. Sometimes we will stand in place, man. We will stand in place in formation. As the Bible says, be still. The Bible says, be still. I am your God. Amen. Stand in formation. Sometimes we're going to sway from side to side. Like the tree, like the palm trees. And the Bible says that we are like trees planted by the river. The wind will come and we will not break. Because we have the strength of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. We have that same spirit yep. that brought Jesus from the death lives inside right. of us. We will not break. Right. But we must not bind the hands of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Give them room to work in us. We have to. Sometimes we will be found on our knees as the battle is about to begin. Faith, trust, confidence is growing with every step we take forward. Forward not backwards. In God we move forward because his, like his word is living. It's not dead. It's not a history book. It's the ever living word of God. The indestructible word of God. So every day there must be a testimony. Every day there's going to be something new on how God saved you. Every single day because his word is alive. So why as Christians are we going to take a step backwards when we are preaching Jesus, a God that's alive. Amen. Amen. There is neither, in the Bible says Galatians chapter 3, verse 28, it says, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Amen. We're all the same in Christ. Right. We are all one in Christ. There is no reason why one Christian keeps moving forward and another Christian keeps going backwards to his old ways. Right. We all serve the same God. Right. And he's not going to bless me more than he's going to bless you. He's going to bless us as we are. But men, it's, we are Christians right here, everybody, right? right. We're all believers. We're all the child children of Christ right Amen. so if, if you see me struggling if you see me taking a step backwards are you going to just stand there and watch me or what are you going to do man what are you going to do you're going to help me right come here brother give your hand this is how we walk as Christians walking forward moving forward if he wants to give a step back, I'm going to bring him with me. On, I'm not going to leave him back. No. Yep. We belong to Christ. You're my brother in Christ. And I love you. And I see you down. I'm going to go and pick you up, brother. Amen. I'm not going to point a finger at you. Oh, I wonder what he's going through. Come on. I'm going to be right there to give an encouraging word and make sure that you receive it. And we together, brother, can keep going forward. Oh, Lord. That's what we do as men, as Christian men. Hallelujah. Leave that for the world. That's what the world does. Right. What, what, what's the sayings out there? Every man for himself, right? right. Every man for himself out there. Right. Hey, I, I made it, bro. I'm not my brother's keeper. That's, king That's king it. Mentality. I made it. You didn't right. make it? Hey, right. bro. Right. Sorry for you, bro. Right. But I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for you. I got a head start on this blessing. I am waiting for you. That's the world that we live in. That is a cruel world. Mm -hmm. But we're here to be the light. Yes, sir. Right? Yep. Weren't we the salt? Did the Bible say we're the salt? Yes. Are we supposed to give a little bit of flavor? Come on. A little bit of Cajun flavor? <laughs> we're supposed to. You're supposed to, when you speak, people are supposed to be like intrigued yes. in what you're saying. You're supposed to be like the 
those conversations, they, they edify me. That's flavor to the conversation. That's flavor, right? There. We're the salt of this world. We are ambassadors. We're the elite. We're the ones representing God. We represent Jesus. What kind of Jesus do you represent? Who's your Jesus? My Jesus is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So every chance that I get, I'll speak of Him. About His goodness. About His mercies. About His grace. That no matter where you find yourself, God can lift you up and restore you and heal you and bring you back to where you're supposed to be and give you life. Amen. That's the Jesus that I preach. Hallelujah. What Jesus do you preach out there? Do you preach Jesus? We have to be hand in hand, brothers. If Pastor Mark calls, if Pastor Danny, if Pastor Jack, whoever calls that they need something, I'll get on my truck and hammer it down to Petula. <laughs> Normal driving is two and a half. My driving, two hours and 50 minutes to get here. It's all good. God goes before me. <laughs> Lord, Around with angels, Lord. Angels can fly, man. Yes, they keep up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they can keep up. <laughs> but there is no distance for brotherly love. Thank you, Lord. When I needed them, when I started my church, no questions asked. Tell me when and where, and I'm there. They go and serve and minister and anoint and pray and edify. Keep encouraging words. That's what I'm talking about. That is the evidence of God. Thank the Lord. Right there, brothers. People need to see the evidence of God in each and every one of you. To those that profess to be Christians and believers. Yes, sir. He is not going to bless me more than you or bless you more than me. We're all the same in his eyes. The question is, do you want to be blessed? Do you have the faith that God can bless you? Jesus can bless at any moment that he wants. He doesn't need our permission. One day, Jesus entered the house of a Pharisee. And he, was, he entered to go eat bread, bread on a Sabbath. There was a certain man who had dropsy. You know what dropsy is, right? He was all swollen up, the man. He saw, Jesus saw that that man needed healing. And healing came to that man. But this is the thing. It's not just the story about a healing. About a man being healed. In Luke 14, it says, Verse 1 through 4. It says, Now it happened, as Jesus went into the house of one of the rulers of the Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath, they watched him closely. They're always watching Jesus to see if he would fail, to see if he would do something wrong. It was always just to see what he was going to do, to throw it in his face. That's what the world does. Doesn't matter, you do a thousand good things. The moment you do one thing wrong, that's it. And behold, there was a certain man before him who had dropsy. And Jesus, answering, spoke to the lawyers and to the Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? But they kept silent. And Jesus took the man and healed him, and he let him go. He doesn't say, the man prayed or asked to be healed. Jesus healed him to make a point to the Pharisees who were always watching to see if Jesus would do something wrong. But Jesus took that moment to bless that man with healing in front of everybody. Right. God can and will bless you in front of people, Woo. in front of your enemies. Oh. He has set a table before the presence of your enemies. You, that is the God that we speak of. That is the God that we serve. That God has already prepared that table yes. before the world. Yes. God is going to bless you when you least expect it. 
All you got to do is walk righteous before Him. That your heart is alive with His Word. And expect to be blessed. God doesn't want you to live in poverty. Which a lot of people believe that. God doesn't want you to live in lacking. How are we going to be representing Jesus if we're lacking? We need to follow the promises of God. But if you don't read His promises... How are you going to know the promises? Come on. Yeah. There's so many promises in the Bible. Right. But we need to be in reading and in prayer, in obedience to His Word, always having our ear inclined to His voice. Right, right, right. But be careful when Jesus answers. Because when Jesus answers, sometimes you might not like it the way He answers you. But now you have to be obedient because He answered <laughs> What happened to Moses? Moses went to God. Lord, these people, they're hungry, they're thirsty. What do I do? Okay, Moses. This is how you're going to go. You're going to give them water. But you're going to go to that rock. You're going to bring all the people. You're going to gather around the rock. and You're going to pray. And I'm going to make water come out of it. But when Moses got up from prayer, he saw that the people were nagging and coming against him, coming against God. He got frustrated. And what did he do? He struck that rock. Water still came out. But it wasn't God's way. God had already told him how he was going to bless him. And what happened to him? He was only allowed to see from a distance a promised land. Be careful, man. It is good to talk to God. And it is awesome when God speaks to you. But the next part is the one that's very difficult. The obedience part. We want to do things our way. But God says, my ways are better than your ways, son. Right. What are you doing? I know exactly what you need and how you need it. Don't go against me. How, what did he tell Paul? Paul. Stop going against the goat. Paul, stop fighting against me. Stop coming against me, Paul. I'm going to use you. But stop fighting. I'm going to need you to go out there and minister to the Gentiles and to all the Jews. But it's going to be my way, Paul, not yours. We need to stop resisting God. We need to resist the devil, not God. We need we're not supposed to be confused with that. Right. A lot of times we want to resist God. No, God, I got this. No, you don't. Come on. God got it. Amen. 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 Not us. We are drunk drivers when it comes for us driving by ourselves. When we're driving without Jesus, we're drunk drivers. <laughs> we're hitting every mailbox, every fence, every stop sign. <laughs> That, that's the way we drive. But I don't drink. It don't matter. Spiritually, you're drunk. Because God is not guiding you. And when God is not guiding us, the Bible says that there is a way that seems right to man, but at the end, you're going to find what? So are you driving straight? No. You're driving drunk. Psalms chapter 1. Verse 1. Thank you, Lord. It says, Blessed is the man. It doesn't say a certain man. <laughs> it doesn't say that he has limitations on how many are going to be blessed. It says, Blessed is the man. If you belong to God, you are a blessed man. No matter how many of you are, we could be the room full. And you belong to, we're all blessed. Yes. But if you don't have God in your heart, you're the only one that's not blessed. Right, right. According to the word of God. According to the word. Two believers walking side by side, like I showed you, should be moving forward in Christ. Not taking two steps backwards. And the other one going forward. When you look behind or take a step backwards, you're looking at what you left behind why? If God saved you, if God rescued you, right. what 
what's out there that, that you're still wondering what's going on what's in your past and you, I wonder how they're doing and I wonder that still feels good I wonder they're still doing that what for there's nothing about my past that I'm proud of Come on. so I don't look to the past the Lord. I don't look to where I was the only times where I might look to the past, only if I have to minister right. to somebody yep. that went through what I went through. Right. That's it. Yep, yep. But I don't desire the past. I don't, I don't need to taste again the things that I used to taste back then. Come I on, don't. Thank you, Lord. It's always looking forward, yep. keeping our focus on Jesus. And not on nothing else. Right. Because everything else is going to take your, your focus away from God. And that is the work of the enemy. Right. He's there 24-7 trying to take that focus away from God. So he can take you in and show you the past. And how good it was. And how awesome it was to go out there drinking with your buddies and, and whatnot. None of that. No. Amen. No. I have a family that God saved me. My family got saved yep. because of God. Thank you, Lord. Because we decided to move forward in Christ. Amen. I'm here. I'm alive. I'm well. Thank you, Lord. Not in jail and not dead. Right. Amen. You guys are here. Yep. Were you supposed to be here? Probably not. Do you know what we all deserve, guys? It might sound a little harsh. But pastors... There's several pastors here. Correct me if I'm wrong. We all deserve death. Right. It's true. The Bible says that God died for us. Thank you, Lord. Even when we were sinners. He took our place. Romans 5. And this word, love. our sister Mia from church said it on a Sunday morning. Right. Everybody was worshiping God. It was a beautiful song. And she was singing up there yesterday. Was it Sister or something? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Sister Sunday. <laughs> and then she comes to the front, Sister Mia, and she says, uh, Everybody deserved to be dead. What? <laughs> Everybody wanted to leave I didn't want to make it too obvious, you know? Okay, sis, where are you going with that? <laughs> yeah, I didn't know where she was going with that, you know? But she's smart. She has the word of God. She's anointed. And she says, because of Jesus Christ who died on that cross, took sin, took death, Thank took God. everything that we deserve, they took it on the cross. Ooh, wow. It hit home. Wow, Lord. Yes. And it is the truth. Amen. Nothing but the truth, brothers. We didn't deserve to be here. Right. Yeah. But because of the yeah. grace Ooh, and mercy of Lord. God Lord. that he took everything upon Lord. him on the cross, yes. we are here. Thank you, Jesus. We are here yeah. because we were obedient to that great invitation. Right. Not the invitation to go to church. <laughs> Not the invitation to come to men's and eat. Taco salad was really good, you know. And the tamales and the menudo, brother. It's not the invitation for that. It, it's much, much better than that. It is the invitation to come to the presence of God and receive everlasting life. That right there, my brothers, is a great invitation. But many refuse it. Many are like that woman that she received dies. And once she saw, she didn't like it. She rejected when it was him who gave her his eyes. Sometimes you pour out your heart to the world. To maybe your closest friend or one of your family members that you believe God is today. And you pour out your heart. And it's that good enough that breaks you. That breaks you, brother. 
Because you see the, the reality. You see how they're in bondage. How they're prisoners. There are more prisoners out here than they're in prison. More prisoners out here spiritually. Last time I told my church, you see sometimes I get emotional in church because I see the, the people coming in and if you see them with your spiritual eyes, they walk in with a smile, brothers. But if you see them spiritually, they're crawling into church. They're dragging themselves. You don't know how many demons they fought to get to church. And then they get to church and then you have other people just criticizing, oh, look at the shoes they're wearing. Oh, look at the boots. He didn't even clean the boots. Oh, look at her hair. Good thing we don't have a hairdress cold, right? Because I'm home. My hair is not combed. But I don't care about my hair. What I care about is what's inside my heart. Oh, and when we go to church, we should not be out there judging and right. knocking. Come on, brother. This is a $10 shirt, brothers. That I wear so comfortably. Because I'm not in bondage to, to brand a, a clothing, a brand or, or this and that. I am no slave to nobody but Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And that's how we're supposed to live. Not caring for what people say or what people are going to say about you. You live life to the fullest. As Christians, we're not supposed to exist. We existed already for so, bye, many, bye. Come on. so long without Jesus. I'm living life, brother, like you wouldn't believe it. Thank you, Lord. Joyful. Are my heart full of joy and peace and love? Amen. Knowing that my children are safe, my wife is protected, Thank my household is safe. I can I can go to sleep with the door unlocked, yes. and I don't care because that house there's a hedge of protection around it, brothers. Amen. It's filled, surrounded by angels, yes. ministering angels, and yes. angels of warfare. God ain't gonna let nobody, come nothing, Thank you, Lord. come and mess with His son. Come on, man. But that is the faith that I have. That's where I stand. Right. Those are the promises that I'm standing. Where the promise where God says, "I'm never gonna leave you nor forsake you. And I'm gonna be with you to the end of time. Yeah. I'm gonna heal you. I'm gonna bless you. I'm gonna prosper you. I'm gonna keep your health intact." God says that the word, brother, is health to what? Our bones. So I hold on to his words. Yes. About eight months ago, from going to sleep perfectly fine to waking up in the morning, I get my phone. This is a true story. And it's going on right now. This is about eight months ago. I woke up and I, I get my phone to see the time. Sometime. Wow, I couldn't see it. I gotta go wash my face. I go wash my face. I come back. I can't see. I can't see. I lost my my what do you call it? The short vision. I can see far, but not to read. I don't know what you call it. Short, whatever. Short sighted. I don't know. All I know that I had to run. No, 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 no. I'm still young and handsome, brother. You're the only thing I don't wear just for men. Salt and pepper. They got salt and pepper. Watch this, guys. This, this, watch what's happening. And this is what I'm dealing with right now. So I run to the dollar store. And I buy those $10 reading glasses. Brother, I see perfectly fine. I can read. So I said, okay, fine. My eyes like there's something going on. Three months into it. Um, in, now I, I, I go to church. And I have to wear my glasses to read the message, whatever. Do I have them on right now? No, I have them. But, uh, let me get to it. Hold on. Let me get to it, brother. Watch, watch. Uh, I'm still debating with God every day, Lord. What's up, Lord? But three months into it, all of a sudden, only in church or behind the podium, I don't need glasses. But as soon as I get down, <laughs> I walk out those doors, I can't see nothing no more. But right now, God has been graceful and merciful to me. Amen. That he knew that I was struggling behind the podium to see glasses, and then I wanted to see the people like take them off. <laughs> wow, 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 preach it to them. And then I gotta go back to my notes. Okay, hold on, Jerry. 
So God saw the struggle. He said, okay, son. I'm going to allow you not to use glasses Hallelujah. behind the pulpit. Thank you, Lord. But Lord, I love you, Fred, Lord. But Lord, come on, Lord. I don't want to use it my side either, Lord. Heal me completely. Amen. And I know he's going to do it. Amen. He's testing us. Like in Genesis 22, verse 1, where it says that he was testing Abraham. Abraham was quick to be obedient to God, right? I'm obedient to God no matter what. He said, fine, Lord. You want me out there wearing glasses so I can see the That's fine. As long as behind the... Guys, here I can see everything perfect. Right here, behind the podium. But as soon as I get off, I can't see it. I can't see my messages or nothing on my cell phone. I'm praying about it. I'm, still, I'm still praying. I know God's going to give me a couple he, He's going to restore my eyesight because that's what God does. I'm staying on that front. No, it's okay, Pastor. No, no. No. God, make me back to the original way I was before, Lord. I need my eyesight back, Lord. Normal, Lord Jesus. He's going to do it. I know it. I, I, I'm standing in that promise. Amen. I ain't letting go. Amen. I'm going to be like that woman, the persistent woman to that judge. I, the judge said, I'm going to bless you just because you're annoying. And you're nagging. Lord, I'm nagging, Lord. I'm going to nag. You see, the brothers, we got to hold on to those promises. But we got to wake up every morning. Hey, Lord. Thank you for another day, Lord. Put someone in my path that I'm going to minister to. Always seek to serve God. When you go to sleep, always thank God for everything. And show and show and show me, Lord, where I fail each day, Lord. Because there is room every day, man. Every day, there is room to be edified, to grow, to learn more, to see where you, we need the help. Where we need to grow spiritually every day. There is room for that. I don't think... That we will never hit a day where I'm going to say, Lord, I know it all. I've read the Bible ten times and I, I don't even, I'm done, Lord. No more advice. No more edifying, Lord. I'm good. I don't think that day will ever come. Because the more you dig into the Word, the more we're going to find, right? When you look behind or take a step backwards, you're looking at what you left behind. Don't try to gain your life or your past by going backwards. Lot's wife lost her life because she looked back. Right. She lived in Saddam and Gomorrah. But part of her life stayed in the past, in the, in the past that she missed. What can you miss from your old days? She was turned into a bitter salt. She was a 50-50 with God, which made her an enemy of God. God says, you're either with me or you're against me. Right. You're either cold, you're hot, but if you look warm, I'm going to spit you out. God says, you're in the spirit, and you're in the flesh. Right. There's nothing in between. Right. They're with God, brothers. You're all in. Come on. You're all worldly. That's it. There's nothing in between, guys. Don't, don't, don't believe that lie. Don't believe it when they tell you, it's okay, go out there. You already came to church on Sunday. God, God, God will take that into consideration. Go. Live your life. You're young. YOLO. YOLO. They say, YOLO. Go. Have fun. You're young. Nah, man. Yo, yo. Oh, brother. <laughs> you knew. Yeah, that's, that's not about sex or what? Ah, you guys never heard it over here or what? We're all kicking the knee, bro. No, Jesus. Touch him, Lord. Jesus. You only live once. That's what the world says. But we cannot be teaching that line. We can't. Who said, uh, Pastor, Pastor said it a little while ago. Tomorrow, it's not promised. We got what, three and a half more hours for this day to be gone? Are we going to fit in the day? I don't know. I'm going to get in the, I'm going to hit the road in about an hour. I don't know what's going to happen. 
But one thing I know, I don't need him. But one thing I know, brothers, my wife is driving. That's why I brought her. You think I brought her just to talk? No. That's what she prays for me all the time, brother. <laughs> Yet, yes, I know, brother, you did. But brothers, the one thing for for certain I have that I know where I'm gonna be. Thank you, Lord. Amen. That's it. Amen. Pastor said. Amen. Everybody is talking about the end of the world, the coming of Christ, and Christ is coming for the church. Amen. That's fine. That's okay. Teach it all you want. But if you're right with God, you're not going to fear. Come on, you're not going to live in thank fear. You Lord. Glory to God if he comes tonight. That's fine. Or I'm gonna, if he comes in the morning, glory to God. I'm ready. Yep. But we cannot live in fear. Yes. Man, if he comes tonight, I, I, I don't know because I still hate my brother over there. He, he, he owed me a hundred bucks and he said he was going to pay me. That man hasn't paid me. Bro, I'm going to go burn down his house or something, man. I need my money. That bro. It's okay, Pastor Mark. It's all on TV and social media. Well, you sorry, sir. It's all part of the word of God. The anointing of God. Yes, that does. But brothers, we cannot have unforgiveness. We can have resentment. We can have anger. We can be prideful, man. Pride is going to bring you to death. Pride is going to let you go to heaven. There's no room in heaven for none of that. Not even the cowards are going to go to heaven. Oh, I don't know how to enforce those words, brothers. This is serious. Yep. The word of God. The word of God is life or death. Right. Either you're headed straight to the hell or you're going straight to heaven. Thanks. Heaven is my home. That's it. Oh, I, I confess that everybody in this room is going straight to heaven. Amen. amen. Glory amen. to God. Everybody. <laughs> now, we, brothers, we need to get our families. Right, right. To join us, yeah. our wives, our kids, our grandkids, our, 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 our daughter-in-law, your son-in-law, whoever, bring them with you. Thank you, Lord. Get them to the feet of Christ. Yeah. We have to do that. We can't get tired. We can't give up. Right. Nobody gave up on us. Thank you, Lord. The person that always talked to me about coming, he never got tired of telling the church. Why am I going to give up? Why am I going to get tired? There's no room for excuses. Right. No more, there's no more room for excuses that I didn't know or no one told me. God will oversee ignorance once, not twice. For one time. Okay, fine. You're ignorant about it. But let me show you through the word. Let me show you. Acts 17.30. Acts 17.30 says, Truly, <laughs> this times of ignorance... God overlooked. But now commends all men everywhere repent. to repent. Right. Right. Everything that I have in this matches message, you can back it up with the word of God. Amen. There's nothing that I want to say that's coming out from me. I have nothing good to tell you. Nothing good to tell you. So I said, Lord, I don't want to stand behind that pulpit and speak to this man on my own accord. I want you, Lord, to speak to them. Give them a message, Lord. It's coming straight from you. You know their hearts. You know what they're going through, Lord. You know what they're feeling. You know their struggles, Lord. Speak to them directly. Let me tell you something. It's easy to start something, but it's difficult to finish. Come on. To follow through, to be persistent yeah. in the good times, in the bad times. God speaks to us in a way that he makes it clear. That he wants the best for us. Yeah. But if you have started, if you're a new Christian, if you barely started this walk of faith, endure, persevere, yeah, yeah, keep yeah. moving, push you forward. Come on, come on. Don't back, don't go backwards. Right. Keep moving forward, no matter what you're going through. God will save you yeah. and rescue you. Yeah. Don't give up. The yeah. blessing is around the corner. Yeah. We yeah. can only see it inside these four walls. 
But outside, the blessing is there because God sees everything. God has somebody prepared to bless you out there. But don't give up. A lot of us, we give up right before the blessing. We go back into our old ways. Why is it so easy to go back to your old ways? Because we still have the flesh. We still have the memories. The way we used to talk before it's still fresh in our tongue. That's why it's so easy to go back. But that's why we have to crucify the flesh, says yep. the word of God. Right. Crucify our bodies. Yep. Let the dead bury their own. Pick up the cross and follow me. Right. Sacrifice everything. God says, I'll have your riches in heaven. This life is short. I, I give a message on a funeral. And uh, they did not like it very much. <laughs> I said, everybody says that 50 years is, is your half-life. It's your middle, midlife, mid-life crisis when men buy Corvettes and have a 20-year-old girlfriend and stuff. <laughs> what? Well, I don't even know that you would. <laughs> what? My wife holds a shotgun. Brothers. But... Who's good in math here? Who's good in math? Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> shoot, shoot. All right, it's easy. It's easy. Okay. What the, the Bible says, what, what's your lifespan? 127. No, 70. 120 is long. So 70. 120. Okay, 120. <laughs> That's too long, brother. That, no, 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 brother. The Bible says 70 years right. and 80 with good life, right? So 50 years, is that midlife? No, it would be 35, <laughs> maybe 40. So I'm way past midlife. I'm 44. <laughs> bro, shush. <laughs> you putting more years on me, bro? <laughs> Brothers, think about it. We are past midlife already. We have not that very long to be here. Let's make it count. Yes. Let's have our riches in heaven where we're going to live for eternity. Amen. This life here, we can make it with frijoles and tortillas de harina, bro. Beans and flour tortillas. <laughs> Dude, I can live with rice and beans every day, Mark. I know. Look at you over there. <laughs> What's going on? What's up with Pastor Marco? <laughs> barbecue <laughs> brothers we can make it and we can live but if we would put it to ourselves to preach his word Cotula would be different Pearsall Delhi would be different Come on. the valley would be different if every single man would preach his name I saw a video was it your son brother with a bullhorn. Bro, that brought tears to my eyes. He was in Cotula. Young lad, how old is he? Six. Six year old brother with a bullhorn on the side of the street at Dollar Store, preaching Jesus. Woo. Repent! <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Repent! Adam and Eve, they, they, they didn't listen to God. Wow. He was talking about Adam and Eve. He was talking about repentance. He was talking about coming to the feet of Jesus. Six years old, brother. Put in the example. How many of us is brave enough to get a bullhorn and start preaching in the streets? Not a lot of us, man. Because, because we're, what, what are they going to say about me? What are they going to think about me? Who cares what they think about you? I care what God thinks and says about me. That's what I care about, not men. Because at the end of the day, I'm held accountable. You are held accountable for your own actions, for your own salvation. Your pastor cannot pray your salvation into you. Right. It has to be to you. Right. You have to make that decision. You're going to be face to face with Jesus. And you cannot go and tell Jesus, 
No, hombre, my pastor's prayer did not work. Jesus said, no, hombre, he should have prayed harder for me. God is going to say, it wasn't about your pastor's responsibility. Your responsibility. But a lot of men and women are so used to coming to the pastor. Ah, pastor's going to teach him on Sunday. No, pastor's going to teach him Bible study. We had to do our part, each and every one of us. Yes, sir. Wow. I said, Lord. Yo, and I gave that message in a funeral. And a lot of men thought about it, received it. And a lot of men were like, nah, man, 50 years is mad men life. I still got 50 more years to go. I'll be praying for you. Right now, it's rare the person that you see that goes past 80. Rare. Tomorrow I'm going to have a funeral for one of our ladies uh, from church. Grandma, I call her grandma because she is the grandma to my daughter-in-law. And she passed away at 88 years old. 88. Cancer took her away. Cancer doesn't respect age. Little kids, adults, old people. We never know. Don't rely on money. A disease will hit you. Your money's gone like wildfire. Money's nothing. We need to hold on to the things that we can buy with money. What is it that you cannot buy with money? Peace from God. The love of God. The health that comes from God to us. Those are the things that you can buy with money, bro. Don't make it your God. Don't make money your God. Money is it's nothing. God always gives us a way out. Every day we have an opportunity to do good. To show God our love towards Him. We can start off by letting our yes be yes and our no's be no's. If you say that you're going to come to Bible study, come. You are not lying to your pastor, but you're lying to God if you don't come. You just want to shut her mouth? You want to shut Pastor's mouth? Yes, Pastor, I'll be there on, on Bible study. Yeah, yeah, so he will be nagging me. If you say you're coming, you come. Because you already said it to a man of God. You're not lying to him, you're lying to God. God sees everything. And every word that comes out of our mouth has weight to it. When you promise to give your tithes and your offerings, you need to see it through. You're not giving the money to the leaders of the church. It's for the kingdom of God. Right. You say, well, I don't know what they're going to spend it in. Don't worry about where he's going to spend it. It's going to be on him if he spends the money. You give the money to church. Right. You did your part. Now the leaders of the church want to spend it. It's on them. It's not going to be on you. You did your part. Don't let that stop you. That's just another excuse for you not wanting to give to God. Right. Am I wrong, brothers? That's just the way it is. But we can find so many excuses. Right. He sees our heart and he knows it all. Jesus said in the book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 32. This is what I want to emphasize. Remember Lot's wife. Jesus said it in red letters. Luke 17, 32. Go back and read it. Remember Lot's wife. Jesus is saying, look at Lot's wife. She had a way out. She had an opportunity to preserve her life. Right. God says, go, run. I'm going to burn it. Run, go, go. God gave them a way out. But she chose to turn back. But Lot, and I'm done with the message, I'm done. Someone's gonna be nine, my wife has to drive. <laughs> <laughs> and Lot, he preserved his life by not looking back Thank and you, moving forward. Men, don't look don't look Come back. On. Preserve your life and move forward. Don't take steps backwards. Right. Go forward, go forward. 1733, whoever seeks to save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life will preserve it. Lot's wife, she lost it. Because she was trying to save right. whatever she had. 
but Lot, he lost his life because he didn't turn back. He said, I'm done with that. I'm moving forward. He lost it. It was dead to him. So his life was preserved. What matters is from this moment on. Right. Here forth. Right, brother. What you did yesterday, Come I don't on, know. On. Was it right before God? I don't know. But right now, here, right. moving forward, make it right with God. Thank Preserve you, your life. Thank you still Lord. have a breathing left in you. Your lungs still have air. Use it to praise God, to honor God with your actions, with your words, with the way you walk, with the way you act, and what you give, what you touch. Everything about you, let bring praise and honor and reverence to God. Amen. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. The blessed man is righteous. Amen. Amen. And the one that is not will surely perish. That's it. That's simple. Lord bless you, my brothers. I'm done with the message. Thank you, Lord. Don't look back. Jesus said it in red letters. Remember Lot's wife. When you go home, take that word to your children, to your wife. Remind them of what happened to Lot's wife. I pray a special prayer upon each and every one of you. That the Lord will heal your hearts. That the word of God has fallen in good fertile ground. I pray for this church grounds. I pray for great acres. I pray for the Miracle Center. I pray for Pastor Jackie and his church. I pray for every member that's here that the Lord will bless you and anoint you and open doors that have never been opened before. I pray that God will close doors that are not good for you. But that the Lord will guide you and direct you. The word of God says that his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And I pray that that light is shining brightly before each and every one of you in here. If you have a different ministry, I pray for your ministry. That it will flourish. It will move forward. It will grow in the name of Jesus. I pray for all the surrounding churches around these communities. You hear of Cotula, Dili, Pearsall. Uh, that the churches will get filled with men and yeah, women and yeah, families. Yeah, that are coming to receive. Yeah, that the Lord has given them a special touch in their hearts. A tug in their hearts to go to church. Yes. And I pray that you all have leaders that are ready and willing and able to tend to your flock. Yes, that those that come to receive will receive word. That they are well prepared. That you guys are well prepared to be able to minister, to do deliverances, to be able to teach and to lay hands on the sick. They will be healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let us stand up. We honor God with our lives. We honor God with our actions. And right now, Brother Lewis, I don't know what song you're going to sing. You're going to sing a song? I pray, men, that through this song, you're going to honor God with your voice, with your hands. When you lift your hands on high, when you give God your heart, to him, when you surrender to him, let God heal you and let God bless you and let God give you strength to be able to forgive if you have unforgiveness, if you have resentment, if you're bitter, I pray that God will remove all that resentment, all that bitterness and bring life into you in the name of Jesus. There is no room for bitterness before the presence of the Almighty. Lord, let your light so shine inside of every man in this room. Bless the church, bless the pastors. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God.
Ministry, Pastor Ephraim, thank you. I spoke to him earlier today and I said, you know, Jesus only mentioned a few characters in the Old Covenant and one of them was Lot's wife. And if it's just a few that he mentions, we need to pay attention. Hallelujah. Pastor Ephraim didn't know we are going to do this, but Daddy and I came in agreement to, to do this and you can't say no, praise the Lord. Pastor Reeves has been in ministry for over 20 plus years, and uh, recently he just started a brand new work called Rising Hope there in Sullivan, Texas. And they have a facility this size, 24 by 60 or 30 by 60, and they're already growing. They're, they're, I mean, they're growing. They're packed out, praise God, but they're building already. Right. They're extending the church. They, they're, they're, they're continuing to work. Men come early Sunday morning at about 6 a.m., and they get to work before church even begins. And so we want to sow a seed into their life. And, Amen. you know, we want to bless this work. Amen? Amen. And so maybe you came prepared. Maybe you didn't. It's all right. He has a cash app. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you can get it to him. Glory to God. Amen. But I have a basket right over here. And um, just as you exit tonight, if you'd like to sow into Rising Hope Ministry, do that. And know this, that you're blessed. To be a blessing. Amen. Amen. Genesis 12 2. Glory to God. And so you'll be able to do that and see a church, a ministry, and you'll have seed in the ground in the valley. What a blessing. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this seed, this time as we give to you and bless your work. Lord, you know, we don't normally do this on the men's outreach. We don't pick up offerings. But by the Spirit of God, you said sow the seed. We're obedient, as the word says, because there's a harvest coming. In Jesus' name. So we thank you right now in advance for the seed sown in Jesus' name. For the men being blessed. And until next time, by your grace, as we meet next month at, at the Miracle Center here in Katula, we declare the blessings of the Lord. Make you rich and add no sorrow in Jesus' name. Can someone say amen? amen. Say amen again. Come on. Now stomp your feet and say amen. Glory to God. God bless you, man. Have a wonderful evening. Sow a seed to bless the ministry. Holy Ghost power in my soul.
Get on up here and squeeze up here. Praise the Lord. We'll keep singing that song, Holy Ghost. 